What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. And holy crap, it, it, it must be update season because I mean, we got updates left and right. We've got Twin Motion, we've got Inkscape, we've got Revit. Of course, it's April because, of course, you know, it's it's update season. So, like, well, why not? So, what are we going to do in this video? We are going to spend hopefully not the rest of your life and mine, but hopefully a a good chunk of time going through what is going to be new within Revit 2022. Holy crap. So cool. So we are armed and ready with the ranch water in Texas. We're good to go. I've got everything I need. I'm feeling good. We have Revit 2022 to look at and we're going to run through this whole thing. You can see how long this bar is as I scroll. It, there's a lot to look at. And so I, I will say this is probably going to be a, a lengthy video. So skip around if you want, but I think it'd be worth your time because there's a lot to look at here. So please, if you happen to learn something, which I mean, we're all going to learn something here. Come on, guys. Please like the video. Demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Okay. Here we go. Ranch water and we're good. Okay. Revit 2022. Cool stuff. We, I'm a big fan of the even years. I don't know if you've noticed, but the even years pack a much larger punch than the odd years. They clearly have a different team working for the even years, but cool. 2022 here we go so there's there's a lot of text here and i want to skip a lot of the text but in other words you know there's a lot of videos too here and so i want to play them which is why i have the dumb headphones on so i can hear we can hear together we can run through this together there's a lot basically everyone is going to see something new whether you're in architecture structure mep anything i will say this is going to be primarily focused on architecture because i'm not going to i'm not going to look at all the rebar updates and whatnot but i do want to focus on the architecture so here we go. Interop interoperability. Cool stuff. Let's just play this video and see what we get. Let's skip around here. When you introduce this expanded functionality that better integrate Revit with Format Pro. Okay. Cool. But we're all familiar with Pro Format. We we know what Format is. That's good stuff. It basically gives us more functionality where we can go back and forth to Format. That's really nice. I haven't used Format a lot, but really if I'm talking format or SketchUp, I'm using I'm using format. <laughs> Believe me. So you can import format as a CAD format, which is kind of interesting. Revit 2022 displays format as a supported file format in the import CAD options. The format. Look at that. So as we can see, we've got all these different file types now. Not only do we have DWG files as CAD, we've got everything else we're familiar with, but of course, SketchUp, but the Rhino and Formit, cool. We're now importing Rhino. We'll, we'll probably get to that, but that's cool stuff. Yeah, look right there. We can link Rhino files in. If you're a fan of Rhino like myself, you, you know what kind of value this brings because it's hard enough working Revit with Rhino. Introduces Rhino and Revit, Revit, that is. That's cool. Changes to the Rhino file are immediately updated in Revit by reloading the link or reopening the project. Post and link your conceptual Rhino file in Autodesk Docs and ensure all stakeholders have even in BIM 360. That, that is cool. So it's not limited to a network base. You can use this on BIM 362. This I'm really excited about is kind of like the dumb thing. It's really honestly, it's the small things that we care about. And I know the big features are cool, but it's the small things, the everyday things that you have to do that once they're updated, you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to make such a difference. And this is literally going to change your workflow every day because if you're like me, you're exporting PDFs every single day. So look at this. This is pretty cool. I'm going to, I'm probably going to watch this whole video Auto just so we can see. Revit 2022 includes a native configurable 2D PDF export feature to improve documentation efficiency. The PDF export dialog offers similar options to the print dialog such as the ability to export the visible portion of a view or a user-defined selection of views and sheets. PDF naming rules may be set up within the export setup section of the dialog. You can use this feature to generate PDF file. I mean, we previously didn't have PDF exporting. It was always printing, you know, like he said in the beginning of this video, printing, you know, we're always used to doing that, but exporting, like, when you think of exporting, you have lots more options. You have lots more that you can add to it. You Just like these different naming conventions, the way you organize it, this is going to make PDF exports. <laughs> so, like, awesome. The fact that we have the ability to export PDFs. Names automatically. 
based on your project or shared name parameters. You can also choose to have the exporter detect output size and orientation automatically from the selected views and sheets. The native PDF exporter in Revit 2022 offers familiar and configurable features to improve documentation efficiency. Really great stuff. Now, I haven't worked a lot with Inventor. Obviously, I know what Inventor is. It allows you to work with parts and tools and uh, really the manufacturing side, getting all these, <laughs> really modeling down to the nuts and bolts. You can now directly integrate this with Revit and Revit families, which is really interesting. So I'm not necessarily going to go over that, but moving on, we've got 2D shared views. This should be pretty interesting. Feature for 3D views. In Revit 2022, this feature has been enhanced to include 2D views and sheets. This means you now have the ability to share both 2D and 3D views of your Revit model with project stakeholders who do not have access to the software. From the Collaborate tab on the ribbon, select Shared Views to launch the Shared Views palette. When you are ready to share your current view, press the new Shared View button, name your view, and press the Share button. A notification will appear to confirm that the view is processing. Once this has completed, a second notification will provide you with options to copy the link or view in the browser. A confirmation email will also be sent. You may then share the link with project stakeholders. They will have the ability to view, comment, and mark up the shared 2D or 3D view using the Autodesk viewer in their web browser. Back in Revit, you can click the refresh button in the shared views palette at any time to view the latest comments and other information. The Shared Views feature makes it easy for you to share 2D and 3D views of your Revit model across the project team. Interesting. So this looks like it's meant for BIM 360, so that's okay. A lot of us are using that, but previously we were only, we were only limited to 3D views that we could share with clients. If you're familiar with BIM 360, you could go and look at 3D and you could share that as a link with the Autodesk viewer, so you're basically just sending a link, and that link would be accessing your model on BIM 360. That, that's always been great. And you could make comments and whatnot, but the fact now that we can literally send a plan, a sheet, and do the exact same thing is pretty cool. That's good stuff. So here we go. We've got a whole section called Documentation Efficiency. This is literally speaking to me directly, and I'm so excited. So we'll see. So shared parameters. I haven't gone over that quite in depth in this channel, but we're going to soon. So here we go. More updates to shared parameters in key schedules. Schedules often include multiple items sharing the same characteristics. A key schedule is a special type of Revit schedule that lets you assign groups of parameter values to elements like rooms or doors based on a shared key value. The major advantage of using key schedules is that they can save you a lot of time entering data. You enter the parameter values once in the key schedule. Any object that has the same key value assigned will automatically receive all those parameter values. So right now, nothing has changed. Like that's all within Red. We have key schedule, we have all of that, but now we're about to see how it can work with shared parameters. In Revit 2022, shared instance parameters associated with categories now appear as available fields when creating a key schedule for that category. The key schedule filters compatible parameters that may be included. You can also add shared parameters to the category when you create a key schedule. The use of shared parameters and key schedules make it possible for a key schedule to drive geometry or control visibility in families. When a key is applied to an element, properties assigned by the key become read-only in the properties palette, and Revit indicates the status along with a tooltip for each parameter in the key schedule. Parameter values derived from the key value display an equal symbol to the right of the value. Use short parameters in families and then include the short parameter in a key schedule to control family geometry using the key schedule. This new feature will help you save time and avoid errors in entering data into your project through key schedules in Revit 2022. So that's really interesting. So basically what I'm getting from this is that we have the ability to link shared parameters with key schedules. And not only that, but like your actual model elements and families will be linked to key schedules and can be linked to key schedules 
through shared parameters. Very cool stuff. You can see, I mean, it's always nice to have things linked together to have things scheduled. And that's exactly what this is doing. You have everything linked together through a schedule, 3D models, and all of that is controlled through the fact that you have this new shared parameter that you can use in a key schedule. Very cool. So schedule enhancements, really cool. I'm looking forward to this because I always use schedules. I, they're very underrated, and you could basically schedule everything. So from what I'm getting from Revit 2022 is that there are lots of these types of updates that will kind of really cover a, a big swath of area, and this schedule enhancements should be a big one. I'm looking forward to this one. When working with a long schedule, it is helpful to split the schedule into segments. Prior to this release, these segments were not able to be placed on a separate sheets. Revit 2022 introduces split and place functionality for schedules, enabling users to split schedules and specify destination sheets for each of their segments. That's crazy. So. <laughs> I thought it would be like you, you select the schedule and then you you literally choose where to split it and then you like dump it onto a new sheet or something like that. Well, the, in the schedule yourself itself, you're you're deciding where it's being split and then in what views and sheets it's going on, which is really cool. So I know we've all worked on large projects, specifically projects that have a ton of doors. My gosh, the freaking door schedules can get insane. Like you you've got hundreds of doors and they clearly does not fit on a sheet like that's okay now you can take that one schedule and split it between multiple sheets and you'll always have the same schedule you won't have what i've had before is you have overlaps and so that you're, you're showing a door on both sheets or maybe you you forgot one you, you clipped it too far and so you're, you're missing a door on both sheets so that's that is the nightmare and but with this you don't have that at all you're literally deciding where to split it and then placing it on whatever sheet you want, whatever two sheets. So let's finish this. Maybe there's more. Using this tool, the schedule may either be split into equal segments across the selected sheets or broken into segments of a user-defined height. Very nice. You can now filter by family and type parameters in schedule and material takeoffs. This improves family filtering in single or multi-category schedules. These enhancements give you better control over the filtering and display of schedules in your Revit projects, helping you work more productively and efficiently. That's cool. So basically, if you have a, a material schedule, material takeoff, and you're trying to get areas, this or that, and you've applied... Maybe you want to look at just things you've modeled, just families you've created. Well, now you can actually filter through family and type and so you can see, well, maybe if we maybe if we go with this type of family that I made, it's gonna the square foot square footage of material will be this versus if I take this other family that I made, it's this. Or maybe if I just use a standard wall or whatever, it's gonna be that. So really cool that we have that option too. So scheduling in work sets. This ought to be very interesting because those are two very different subjects. So I'm curious how they're coming together. Revit 2022 enables work sets to be scheduled. You can now add a work set parameter when creating a schedule in work shared models. Nice. The work set parameter is also available when creating material takeoffs, view lists, sheet lists. This is already great because, you know, we, we, what are work sets for? Work sets are for organizing your data, organizing your model. And you can think of them as layers. I don't like to do that just because it's not literally layers. But it's a way of placing and organizing model elements, you know, so it's not just one giant model. And so we do that naturally, at least I hope you do. Check out my video on work sets. That's very, very informative. But besides that, work sets are integral to any properly mo managed model. Like you're going to have them. And so the idea that we have those already means that let's go ahead and integrate them with schedules. So maybe you're what you want to look at in a schedule is based on some sort of work set or something you have in work set. Maybe it's just the site. Maybe it's just elements like that. Maybe it's just the building elements. So now you can filter by that and immediately get down to everything that's just within that work set. Or maybe you want to not include everything within that work set so that you can filter it out. So really cool that we can do that. 
texts, and title blocks. This feature enables you to filter and format schedules and lists based on your work sets. Revit 2022 includes this and many other enhancements to improve your productivity when generating schedules and documentation. Great. Okay, auto shading in two columns. All right, so this is this should be interesting. Also, schedule base. We'll see. Hmm. This looks to be a auto little Revit bit more MEP related, but that's Add okay. Auto shading option in two column panel schedules. Mm -hmm. This feature adapts to the phases being used. Unused phases will automatically display in gray on the panel schedule. This will reduce the number of panel schedule templates required for a project. Simplify. So that's cool. Yeah, I mean, if you're familiar with electrical schedules and panel schedules and you're having two columns and it's it's more of a graphics update, it's making it more readable. So this, I think, will be great. Tag enhancements. The fact that we could do a lot more with tags, this should be really exciting because I know tags, like everyone tags everything essentially and we have ways of tagging everything but now let's see what we can get as far as in the tag enhancements when you rotate a tag in revit you might like to control the angle value precisely a new angle parameter for tags found in the properties palette makes it easier to control the display angle of a rotated tag hmm. cool if you rotate the tag with the rotate command the angle value is automatically calculated, but you can enter a specific value afterwards if you like. That's cool. This feature is easy to apply to tags in your views, giving you better control over your project documentation. Sweet. If a view in your project contains similar elements, you may prefer they share a tag. In Revit 2022, oh, no. you may now apply a single tag to multiple elements and even indicate the total quantity if desired. Simply select the tag and open it for editing by clicking the Edit Family button. Here, you can modify the tag behavior by editing the label and adding the new host count parameter found within the multi-leader oh. tag category. God, this is going to be you so nice. a suffix such as X for multiply and customize its appearance. In this example, the text will display in an orange color and bold font on the documentation. When everything is configured as desired, you can load the modified family back into your project. Once a tag has been placed in the model, you can add or remove leaders to similar host oh, elements at any yes. time this by is selecting awesome. the tag and using the Add Remove Host option on the contextual tab of the ribbon. When you do this, the quantity of host elements is automatically tracked and displayed both in the tag itself and in the properties palette. You also have access to specific snap points to modify the leader lines according to your preferences. These tag enhancements in Revit 2022 add flexibility and will help you create more accurate, readable, and efficient annotations when documenting your projects. So that is really cool. I can't say that I would always want to use like the count, like displaying the count, but using this for, I mean, using this for literally selecting the actual element and it creates a new leader for that element. That's cool because, you know, when you put it, when you make a new tag, maybe you're pasting another one in place. Maybe you're just adding another leader, depending on the type of tag that it is. You may not be actually associate, associating, associating the tag with a particular element. And this way you're literally saying like this element, this element, and this element, all three are the same, or I want them to be tagged the same. And so you're choosing those as different host elements for the single tag that you need, which is really cool. And with the option of putting the number that you have, it, that's cool too. That is, that's great. Cause maybe you have a really high number and you're just like throwing a leader in a direction and you're not literally saying, Oh, there's 200 of these. You could just say, Ugh. I don't know. There's, there's a lot that we could do with that, which is really cool. Multi categories, more tags. And there's a lot more tags here, which is great. Love things with tags. Updates with tags is cool. Again, the small stuff. <laughs> to reduce the number of tag families in your project and to associate elements from different yeah, categories yeah, really. with each other, you may use multi-category tags in Revit. This feature is especially useful when several categories share the same tag graphics or when shared parameters are utilized across several categories. 
In Revit 2022, this feature has been extended to support all existing taggable categories, including some categories for stairs, nice. structural connections, structural cool. internal load categories, analytical categories, and much more. This feature improves efficiency when tagging elements across multiple categories in Revit 2022. Nice. Always good to see that. More, more taggable elements in, in multi-category. Current wall mullions could not, we can't tag those currently. So this is now a new dedicated tag just for curtain wall mullions. Revit 2022 enables tags to be applied to curtain wall mullions. Navigate to the loaded tags and symbols dialog to view the current list of tags and symbols assigned to family categories. A new category has been added for curtain wall mullions. That's great. Here, you may choose to load the tag for curtain wall mullions provided with Revit 2022 or create your own tag specifically for this category. To add tags individually, go to the Annotate tab and select Tag by Category. Then select a mullion. The tag is created and automatically populates with information from the mullion element as defined in the tag family. You can also use Tag All to add tags to all elements of a given type at once. This feature improves documentation workflows for curtain walls in Revit 2022. Nice. That's cool. I can't say there are a lot of times where I would need to tag a mullion, but it's good that you can now. I will say there are a number of times where I use a curtain wall to be some sort of different kind of wall, whether it's maybe like a metal mesh or something like that. And so there might be a reason why you'd want to tag the mullion, because it may not be a mullion, it could be some sort of post column, something like that within a particular wall or element that you just happen to use a curtain wall. So it's good that you can now tag the mullion itself instead of just like the wall. That, is, that doesn't do as much if it's just the wall. So it, that's really cool. So link tag rehosting. So I had, I bet this has to do with links. That's cool. Let's see what this does. Revit 2022 improves the behavior of tags in host models that reference elements in linked models. Hmm. Tags in a host model hmm. that are attached to elements in a linked model will now remember the linked element ID. If a linked file is unloaded or out of date, the tag may be orphaned. However, when the linked file is reloaded, the tag will now reattach to the linked element automatically. That's great. This feature improves productivity for linked model annotation workflows. Not This will not be used so much with an architecture because I'm not trying to tag so much of what's in someone else's model. Uh, but nonetheless, that's really great. The fact that anyone can tag something and if it goes away, it's you know a question mark. But then if it just comes back, it's going to show like it did before. It's going to now then show the data. That's cool. Really good. So multiple values indication. So I... Not sure what this is referring to. It looks like a schedule here and a floor plan, but let's, let's see what this is. I'm sure it's very interesting. Multiple values indication. In Revit 2022, you can control the display of properties when multiple elements having different parameter values for those properties are oh. selected, scheduled, and stacked. So, I mean, initially what I'm getting from this is that it, we're familiar with selecting things in Revit, of course, but when we select things of different categories, types, whatever, and we look at the properties, normally if it's something that that they share like a particular property, a particular parameter, and they're different, it's just white, it's blanked out or whatever. But now we actually see a varies, which is really cool. That That's great because immediately when I see that, that's telling me, okay, these two or three or how many million things I've selected all have this particular parameter in common. So it's showing up in the properties. And not only does it have it in common, but it varies in that there are multiple values spread across these different selected elements. And from that, I can determine, okay, maybe I want them all to be one value, a, a particular value, a, a constant value. So I can literally change that. Whereas before, that parameter would still show up, for example, this elevation override north, that parameter would still show up, but it would show up white, just like all the others. So it, it wouldn't necessarily tell you like, oh, they have something in common or, oh, they have, they share something. But in this case, it definitely does. So that's really great. Let's continue this. When you select multiple elements, any properties that they share are reported. 
In past releases, if parameter values for the properties shared by the selected elements were the same, that value was reported. However, if the values differed, no oh. value was shown. Now, when multiple elements are selected... That's great. So we literally have a tag, a wall tag, and not only are you able, you're now able to tag multiple walls with one tag, but because they've tagged multiple different types of walls, you can see the tag literally says varies. <laughs> wow. Like it, this is going to show up in tags too, because what, let's, let's take this down to like the tag level. The tag is just pulling parameter values and parameter values such as the, the name of the wall, the mark value of the wall are what display in the tag. And so if they vary and if it's now showing up as varied, then it, it makes sense that it would show up in a tag. So that's cool that it does. Selected. And those parameter values differ. They report either as various or as a user-defined custom text string. This behavior is consistent in the properties palette, schedules, and tags. This That's really interesting. So now you could you can literally just tag multiple types of walls, and then you know you can add your own text to it. In this case, it happens to be varies, but. It could be anything. So maybe there's maybe there's a note that you want to apply to those, or maybe there's maybe just those are a different wall type. I don't know, but the fact that there is a, a text override to that is kind of cool. I mean, it, it's nothing that we had before. That's for sure. This feature reduces confusion and improves productivity by enabling you to quickly identify varying parameter values for selected element properties. I mean, just the fact that we have the name or word varies showing up between shared parameter values that are different in elements, it, that's great. That's going to make, I mean, there's going to be less confusion between selecting values and seeing what's different. You're going to have a cl clear indication immediately what's different, what's the same, and how it's all working. Cool. So revision numbering, flexibility. This, uh, I mean, we're going to like this, obviously, because we got to deal with revisions. Revit 2022 provides a set of enhancements to the revision settings. Create custom revision numbering sequences mm -hmm. to support multiple deliverable hmm. packages. We have, we, okay. And specify the minimum number of digits in the revision sequence to maintain a standardized length in alignment with ISO 19650 and other local or international standards. Reference a project stage or phase with a custom prefix or suffix and customize the sequence characters to meet your project specific needs. Share revision numbering sequences using transfer project standards. Improve your project documentation with the new revision numbering enhancements in Revit 2022. That's kind of cool because, you know, we, we deal with RFIs, we deal with PRs, we deal with addendums, this or that. So now you can have sections for each one of those like types of deliverables. And beyond that, you, you're just, you've got the standard sequencing. So really the only thing that's new is that you have different types of deliverables or, you know, revisions that you can add. And then from there, they are going to sequence themselves correctly, which is really nice. So you basically, everything's not custom. Everything's not just text that you input yourself, not a huge update, but something really nice because you can predefine those and then just move on and say, well, this is another RFI. And then you can, it'll be numbered and all that really cool phase parameters. I uh, always like to see more parameters. One of the most efficient ways in Revit to control the visibility and color of elements is to use view filters. Revit 2022 introduces new filter rules, phase created and phase demolished, to help manage the display of phases in your project. As an example, you can define a filter for a specific phase created and use it to change the color of interior walls such that walls created in phase one will display as green in a 3D view. You might create another filter to change the color of phase two interior doors by setting phase created equals phase two to orange. This makes it easier to visually locate elements and understand their phases at a glance in your model. That's really nice because, you know, phasing is always something kind of confusing. You know, it takes uh, a certain type of mind to be able to understand filters and not only filters, but phase filters and phases themselves. There's a, there's a lot to know there, but Besides that, the fact that we can filter using phases, that's really cool because, I mean, I love filters and I love phases and the fact that we can put things together, it's really cool. The f I mean, 
I mean, we're like halfway through now, but like 2022 is already providing quite a lot when it comes to really mixing things together. So things we're familiar with, whether it's works, that's phasing, filters, schedules, tagging. It's almost, from what I can tell, putting them together in a way to where everything seems a bit more integrated, which is really nice. And I mean, that's what you like to see. You like things working together because that's kind of the point here. So grids in 3D, I mean, we know what this is going to be. We're familiar with this. We saw levels in 2020, 2020, yeah, in 2020. So in Revit grids. 2022, you can choose to display grid lines in your 3D views. Go to the show grids parameter in the properties palette to access a list of levels for your project. Select the levels for which you want grid lines to display. This setting applies to all grids in your project but only the grids that intersect the selected levels will appear in this view. You can resize grid extents in a 3D view using grips. So that is so nice. So <laughs> what we had to do, you know, previously and every other year, if we had to change the extents of grid lines, I mean, the whole point is that you're changing the 3D extents of grid lines, but you could never do that in 3D. You always had to go to an elevation or a section view to literally drag it to where you wanted to where you wanted it to hit like the top of the building or something like that. Whereas now, you know, levels was again introduced in 2020. We're then able to like determine the, where those levels are, like the extents of the building almost, like where those levels are. And so like those level heads would show up correctly in elevations or sections. But now the fact that we have grid lines showing up in 3D, we can literally set the 3D extents of grids in 3D, which like, duh, it makes sense. You want to be able to, determine the 3d extents of grids but why the heck not do it in 3d so this is awesome and the fact that we can determine which levels we show and then which grid line i mean we have a, a lot of customization when it comes to showing grids in 3d because i the only thing i fear with this <laughs> is that you work on a large project which a lot of my projects are pretty large and there are lots of grids <laughs> and the fact that we have lots of grids I don't want to go to a 3D view and have these things be on by default. And there's 5,000 grid lines showing up at every level all over the place. So I hope that's not a default, but we'll see. We will see. Let's continue this. It looks good. You can also control the annotation visibility for each grid using the corresponding checkbox next yeah. to each grid. So it's working the same as we're, what we're used to. It, you know, this is like, it, imagine a grid in 2D. You can turn the, you can turn the head off. You can extend it, whatever. Uh, but not only that, you can extend the 3D extents. So really nice stuff. And when you hover over a grid, its plane highlights as a blue planar vertical surface. If you select the grid, in canvas controls will appear and its properties will display in the properties palette. In a 3D view, you can treat grids in many of the same ways as in a 2D view. For example, you can hide grids by element, category, or filter, or by using the visibility graphics overrides dialog. Yeah, we would expect that. You can display grids using halftone. Cool. You can copy, cut, and paste, or delete grids from the model. Hmm. Yep. You can snap to grids when placing other elements. You can change grid instance and type property. That's cool that you can snap to them in 3D. They're not just like existing in 3D. They are functionally existing in 3D. So you could literally use them. So they basically, like imagine using them in 2D views. You can now do everything from what I can tell that you would do in a 2D view, but now in 3D, which is fantastic, including like snap to them as stuff. That's cool. If you want to hide part of your model, you can create a 3D section box. As you can see, the grid lines do not extend beyond the bounding box, making it easier to navigate this portion of your model. That's great. I mean, this is the type of thing that you would expect to see. If we have grid lines in 3D, like, okay, and we make a section box, we would kind of hope that this would happen. <laughs> and I'm not saying that, you know, like, thank you in the fact that we're like, this should happen. But, you know, we kind of expected this with 3D grids. So I'm glad to see this because it is functioning as expected at this point. With Revit 2022, you can display and utilize grids in 3D views to help you orient yourself and navigate your model. Nice. Grids co. All right. Improve default color scheme. I mean, you know, we're, we know the default color scheme is kind of meh. Maybe this is just improving upon that. In Revit 2022, 
a new default pastel color scheme has been added. Mm, rainbow! Scheme, the default color scheme used darker, bolder colors which could obscure other elements in the view. A nice little the pastel. Scheme has been updated to use lighter pastel colors to alleviate this issue. This feature enables users to achieve better results using mm. color fill schemes without the need for manual color adjustments, thus improving their productivity. Nice, very simple stuff, uh, but a very nice update nonetheless. Very small, but I mean, y you can always change these colors, so you can make it any dark color that you want. But the fact that it's default, it's a nice pastel color, it's going to be a lot easier to work with. Show wall core only in plan views. Let's see what this is. I always like visibility. In Let's see what this is. In past releases, it was time consuming to hide the non-core layers of walls on plan views. Revit 2022 introduces a parameter to help you display only the wall core layers quickly and easily. Oh. In the visibility graphics dialog box, deselect the new non-core layers option available under walls to display. Okay, this is, I, <laughs> I don't know where to start with this one. So in my work, I'm not going to the trouble of not showing you know, anything beyond studs, anything beyond the cores of walls and plan views. And I'm also not modeling walls where I just have the stud as a wall and then everything beyond that as another wall, because that's not only time consuming, but would drive anyone insane. So I literally build the wall as the wall is. So what is this telling us? Like, let's go, let, let's go back to what this new feature is. It's now, we, we have the option of now no longer showing any element that's not a core. So basically we can show a floor plan that is only the cores of our wall. And why does this make so much sense? Well, think about construction. You have a floor plan. I mean, not only do you have a floor plan, let's say you're, you're building a building, you have a foundation, you start with the piers, you start with the columns, and you have the floors. And then once you have the floor, the slab, then you're going to make the walls. But you're not just going to make, you're not going to build the walls as you would model them and ready. You're going to build the walls as the studs, you know, wood studs, metal studs, whatever they might be. But from there, you then build the sheath in and the finishes on each side of the wall at that point. So this is so great because let's say you have a floor plan. I mean, this means now that maybe I'll now have a floor plan that is like specifically for construction. And so that floor plan will have dimensions to everything just show like showing the cores of these walls so the studs and then i'll have another one that's you know you'd have a finish floor plan you know of showing the finishes and so at that point then you can introduce everything beyond the cores and so you have a dimension to these cores and on the the floor plan showing just the cores then you have everything else for dimensions on the finish plan showing everything beyond the cores on all these walls so it helps you understand i mean it, it helps me understand, but also would help a contractor trying to build based on my drawings, understand how to build the building because that's, that's how a building is built. You can't just put up the whole wall as it is. And so, I mean, what we could do already, we could always dimension to the core. Like, I mean, a lot of us already do that. You dimension to the core because they they need those dimensions to determine where the studs go. And then from there, they just use a wall type to determine everything beyond the wall itself. It's like what's involved beyond the studs. But now we can have a plan that shows just the cores, dimension those, and then have a finished plan that shows everything beyond that, which is really cool. Like, I mean, again, this is the simplest thing, but has a giant impact on how you produce documents. Really cool. Display a simplified representation of walls in your 2D views. Wall layers located between the core boundaries of the wall assembly will remain visible. This feature improves your productivity by helping you quickly create easier to read plan views in Revit. That's great. I mean, honestly, that's one of the most exciting yet because it's, it's, it has everything to do with documentation, but so cool. All right. Spot slopes and elevations. I like to manipulate these things and see things in 3d. So let's see what we can do with these spot slopes and elevations. Revit 2022 allows you to place spot slopes and spot elevations directly on RAM elements. Hmm. Add the spot labels, spot elevation annotations on a ramp run, scene plan, elevations, sections, and plate view. Change the annotation parameters to meet your documentation standards. 
It could use documentation workflows with the ability to place spot slopes and elevations or ramps between levels 20 and 22. Cool. Easy stuff. You know, not nothing crazy, but lots of functionality. So design productivity. Cool. We like to see this. Now, I will say tapered walls was new in 2021. So I'm curious if there is anything new here or if it's just really re-release or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Revit 2022 enables designers to control the slopes of the interior and exterior surfaces of a wall. To get started, enable one of the wall assembly layers to display a variable thickness. Okay. We'll expose the cross section type parameters where you can define the slope angle of the interior and exterior surfaces. Change any wall to taper representation by changing its cross section parameters to taper. Update the sloping angles using instant override all the wall temporary dimensions. That's pretty cool. So I, what I think we had within 2021 was just the fact that you could take a standard wall and then taper it one way or the other. So literally give one dimension or one angled value and, to, and take the same thickness and then just angle the same thickness. But now we can literally taper it, make it thicker on one end versus the other. So I think that's what's new, which is really cool. Oh, nice. Paper walls will display clean joints at corner conditions. Hmm. Design slope wall sections more quickly and easily using taper wall features in Revit 2022. It's cool. Really cool. Edit wall profile for slanted walls. So here we go back to tapered and edit the profile. I don't recommend editing profile unless you absolutely have to, but we'll see what happens here. Revit 2022 enables you to edit the wall profile of slanted walls. Yeah. Modify the sketch boundaries Standard. of a slanted wall along its work plane. This gives you greater control over the display of your wall geometry. That's cool. So uh, really simple. I mean, we know how the edit profile works. You just make the new profile of the building, but like, why the heck not in slanted walls? So it's the same. Cool. But in slanted walls, generative design enhancement. So, you know, we're all familiar with generative design, but we've probably may, maybe not used it. So I, I haven't used it a lot. I know what it is. I've used it before, but it it hasn't quite found a place within my workflow. So I'm curious what we can see here and that maybe more of it is available more more of it is could be used in what i'm doing every day we'll see make faster and more informed design decisions with the new enhancements to generative design in revit 2022 revit 2022 shifts with new out of the box sample study types that helps you optimize the distribution of objects in space Okay. These include grid object placements, step grid object placements, and randomized object placement. That's not that big in that, I mean, more generic studies. That's cool. But I, my, my thing is that I, I want to use it for something specific. And that specific thing is probably not something that Autodesk is providing as a study out of the box. So I don't know. Maybe there's more to it, hopefully. Expedite generative design studies with a new option for saving default settings, including default method, number of solutions, and C value. Okay. Yep. Find your input values faster with the new drop down input mm -hmm. selection list. Drop down nodes in your Dynamo graph can be set as inputs for an improved user experience. Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So you're selecting families, you're selecting you something at this point. As constants or variables in the study settings. Use a slider to define the constant value. Visually differentiate constant inputs from variables in the parallel coordinates chart, where the constant value is plot on a vertical dash line. Hmm. Okay, that's nice to know. Organize and share study types easily with the new options to consolidate your studies using custom folder path. Oh, here we go. Explore the improved generative design tools panel in Dynamo, which mm -hmm. offer a streamlined, error-free study privileging experience. Resolve missing packages automatically, receive alerts oh. for issues in the graph, and detect nice. missing remember nodes. That's cool. 
achieve <laughs> better design outcomes with these enhancements to generative design in Revit 2023. Cool. So not a ton on generic generative design, but you know, a little bit, which is nice to see. <laughs> I can't say I care about this all that much. Enhance <laughs> RPC elements. You know, I don't. Not sure how many of y'all are rendering out of Revit still. I would kind of hope you're not, but if you are, you know, this is what this is. You know, this will go into the program. So as a default, it is nice, and they look pretty good. Experience the improved performance of realistic views with options to switch off all the RPCs in the model and or display the orientation in billboard mode towards the camera. <laughs> you can make everything the billboard. Simplify representation of RPCs in non render views, support for the furniture category in the family editor, cool. and an expanded library of rendering assets, including people, transportation. Oh, jeez. Honestly, when I see this, it's a bit overwhelming in that I don't want to see this type of thing in Revit, but that's just me. Um, this is one of the first negative thoughts about 2022. I, this is something I won't necessarily be using because I have other means of using this. I have Twinmotion, I have Inkscape, I have other places that I can pull these assets, and I don't want, for lack of a better term, these things bogging down my model. So that's definitely something I don't want in my model. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could see that, but you could also see you probably don't want to use that. I don't know. Just saying. All right, so here we go. I think it's MEP stuff, steel connections, great. Again, like I said, I'm going to skip most of the MEP and structure because that's not me. Sorry, I'm an architect. Model rebar, cool. Move rebar in a set. That looks like it's really helpful. You could make rebar a set and then move it. Um, rebar replacement by two points, cool. This looks exciting. Select shape code, nice. MEP system stuff, design fabrications. Again, two uh, shading within two columns. Load Autodesk family. Here we go. Load Autodesk family. I wonder what this is. Is this like a, I don't know, like a like a library or something? We'll see. Load Autodesk family opens a dialog that displays default content provided by Autodesk. This content uh, is accessed from a cloud-based repository. In Revit 2022, the Load Autodesk family tool is no longer a technology preview and it adds a navigation elements to help you find the families to load into your model. These Interesting. So this is basically a family browser, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with different family browsers. There's a number of them out there. Uh, some of them are okay. None of them are great, I'll be honest. And this kind of looks like more of the same. I'm, I'm not overly excited about it, but I'm also, you know, this could be useful. It's the type of thing that, if it works well enough, then you don't have to use a third party application or plugin or something that's just going to add trouble to your model potentially. So if it's something that's baked into Revit and it works just fine, then that's good. Use that. These include sequential search facets with back, forward, and home buttons to assist you navigate through the available content. The node you are currently browsing is highlighted to help you understand its location in the organizational structure. This feature helps users find the right family content more quickly, improving user productivity. Cool. You know, not bad. <laughs> family browser within Revit. We like to see that. Improved parameter identification. Okay, let's look at this. Should be interesting. Oh, okay. In Revit 2022, you can use filters to quickly find available parameters when creating schedules and working with project parameters. When you create a schedule, the Fields tab in the Schedule Properties dialog includes a filter section. You can filter the available parameters. Look at this. So like we, you know, maybe, maybe you're the type of person that doesn't make any project parameters. Okay, well then that means every parameter that you use would be considered a built-in parameter. That's cool. But maybe you're the person who's like, I'm just gonna go nuts and make all the project parameters and just go crazy. So that would be under project parameters. You can literally decide what you see instead of just all the available fields, which could be insane depending on how crazy you are. <laughs> you can see them there. And also it's going to pull different shared parameter categories, which is really nice too. It was based on the following criteria, parameter name, parameter type, discipline, value, oh, type or instance. And the fact that it's type or instance, maybe you could say, well, I'm, I'm only concerned about 
anything that's instance based that someone might accidentally select that one thing, edit that, and like you want to be able to track that in a schedule, or whatnot. You can just schedule instance parameters, just schedule type. That's cool. The fact that we can see this within this dialogue, within the I'm going to add this parameter to the schedule dialogue is exciting and, and it's easy and it's nice to know this kind of thing up front. And because maybe you build the schedule and you realize, oh, well, that parameter is an instance parameter and I would rather it be a type and like it's just all that kind of thing. So it's good to be able to know that right now. You can use the parameter name filtering criteria as a search tool. As you type in the parameter name search field, the list is actively filtered. When filtering is scheduled, the filter only affects the available fields. Fields selected for use in the schedule are not affected by the filter. You can also use information in the tooltips to help identify the correct parameter to work with. Tooltips. That's great. Parameter. Like we don't have that information right now. Like you can't hover over this element and see or this parameter to see not only the type of parameter that it is, but like that extra information, like how it's organized. That's really cool. That you can see that you you can literally add all the parameters that you need and know what is involved with all those parameters from literally the fields dialog box in the schedule properties. That, parameter name, cool. parameter type, data type, and description if provided. The filtering tool also appears in the product parameters dialog. Revit 2022 enables you to easily filter and identify the types and characteristics of parameters being used in your projects, helping you manage them more accurately and efficiently. Really great. like to see that. Okay. So here we go. I think we're, we're getting to the end finally. Uh, additional features for design productivity, uh, route analysis. I think we kind of have that already for as far as maximum travel, whatnot. It's a little gimmicky, but it's so cool. Rebar stuff, reload configuration improvements. I'm curious what this is. Infrastructure, yeah. Category list sorting, cool. I'm not, not quite sure what that is. Renaming default shared site, nice. Resizing all these dialogues. So, my gosh, I there's a number of dialogue boxes that you could not actually resize, like as dumb as that sounds. You'd get this box up, and it's like maybe you're one in particular is you're going to add a, a view from a different Revit project. You, you have the name, and it's like this long sheet along the long sheet name and you can't see what it is and you want to expand it what you can't well hopefully now that it's covered here but we've got all these different dialogues that you can now you know resize and expand and literally see what's going on because you can read it and <laughs> it's cool small productivity enhancements remember last you just tab and material browser that's kind of cool so like it would default to one of the tabs and i don't think it was it was almost never the one you wanted let's just say that <laughs> Revit home loading performance, cool. Open cloud from file menu, that's cool, yeah. Nice stuff, multi-select, visibility graphical, right, nice. And then all the developer tools. Okay, cool, we, we, you know, this is exhaustive. I mean, I'm sorry for it being this long. Oh, sorry, Dynamo 2.10.1, cool. More nodes, more things that we can do with that, really nice stuff. Okay, so that was kind of it. I apologize for the video taking 25 years out of your life, and I hope hope you got some value out of it and that it was the longest video I've ever made. But this is everything that we can expect to see within Revit 2022. And please look, you know, stick around for more videos because, I mean, we, we've just looked at the new feature. We haven't actually used it. So, so I'm going to have to not only favorite this page, but keep this and refer to this as I make more videos on each one of these elements for Revit 2022 when we actually have access to it. And then from there, lots more videos to come. So I really, I hope you learned something. And if you did, please demolish that like button. It helps me out so much. It tells me that you learned something that you might've liked the video. And I'm really curious if you like this format. Uh, I, I did this format as like, oh, read along, watch along with me because it's, there's so much here. I would have just gone through and just told you what's new except there's so much going on so if you like this comment please let me know or this this type of pre presenting this information to you i want to know if that's what you're after if it's not and you don't like this this type then let me know if it's just too long or whatever it is do let me know because i want to know in the future 
what might be best for you when it comes to getting content, receiving information from me, because I do, I mean, you're the first thing that I want to prioritize here. So I do thank you very much for watching. It was a long video, so I apologize for that, but I sure hope you learned something. I will see you in the next video. Revit 2022. So excited about this. There's a lot here. So stick around. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.